Welcome to Fitness Monkey Podcast Number One, the best number one podcast in the world. And today I have a very special guest for you. It is my job to find the most interesting person in the community and dig their brain, find out their secret to success in their life, and bring that secret to you, so you can. Use this secret to benefit yourself and make your life better. This show is all about happiness, health, and all the good stuff. So, let me introduce our guest to you tonight. His name is Jaya Govinda. When I first saw him, I thought, "Oh, is this guy from the Star Wars? He looked like a Jedi Master." He devoted his entire life to the Krishna movement, beginning from the 1977, and that's the year I was born. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm enthralled that you were born in the same year that I became connected with this movement. Jaya was originally from Montreal. Grew up active in hockey, swimming, gymnastics, like a regular Canadian. And at some point in life, he began to study about psychology, parapsychology, and the Vedic literature. So, Steve Jobs had a very famous speech at Stanford University. And talking about Sunday evening, going to the Hare Krishna temple for a good meal. Tell us about the good meal. Well, <clears throat> first of all, the meal is is free. And uh, at that time in Steve Jobs' life, he wasn't um, well to do financially. And in that particular address to Stanford University graduating class, he mentioned that uh, the Hare Krishna saved his life because he would walk five miles. Every Sunday for a free good meal, and the meal is actually a vegetarian meal because we're very staunch believers in vegetarian diet.、Um, we don't believe in any kind of violence towards animals,、uh, so we're strict.、Uh, we don't engage in any meat eating. We don't take any intoxication. We don't engage in gambling or illicit sex, and these things are actually considered to be、uh, principles of freedom. And it helps one develop、uh, better consciousness, clearer thoughts.、Mm, very good. I've been to the free meals many times, and it's. <laughs> Me too. I, I have to say it's very delicious. And I happened to saw your presentation, your India trips、mm. photos. It was really awesome. We're actually famous for our food. Our food and our haircuts. <laughs> yeah, what's this thing? What's this haircut for? This is called the Sika. Yeah. And、um, there's three, or, there's four orders of life: the student life, householder life, retired life, and renounced life. So in student life, which is、uh, celibate life, and in renounced life, the the heads are shaved clean, but we keep the little Sika. The flag, and this indicates it separates us from Buddhist thought or impersonalist thought, where we actually understand that the supreme object or the supreme absolute truth is a person. Now, you don't look Indian. How did you end up in the Krishna movement?、Uh, Krishna consciousness is not Indian; it's it's、uh, universal. Just like the sun, it's universal. And it's, it may be known in different countries by different names, and it may first appear in the east, but it's not an eastern sun. It's it's you know it's the sun for everyone. So in the same way, Krishna consciousness, it may appear that it's coming from from India, but it's actually not Indian. It's global, Now, universal. Krishna people they do lots of chanting, right? Yes. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Lama, Hare Lama, Lama Lama, Hare. What's uh, the benefit of this chanting? These are different names of God, and when one chants the names of God, doesn't matter what particular tradition, if you're a Christian tradition or uh, Buddhist or whatever name you particularly like, uh, the name of God and God Himself are non different. So, God is all pure. When you chant the name of God, it actually purifies the heart, purifies the consciousness. Can I chant Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga. You certainly can chant Lady Gaga if you're a fan of Lady Gaga, and I'm sure she would really like that. But you're not going to get much benefit, and you're going to very soon get tired of chanting Lady Gaga. <laughs> I can pick up her crazy energy and become a good singer. But she's not going to have that crazy energy for very long. Maybe 10, 20, 30 years. Whereas, when you're talking about the Absolute Truth, when you're talking about God, it's, it's eternal. And you never get tired of chanting His names. Even in the Christian tradition, it says, Hallowed be thy name. Um, <clears throat> and when you're, when you're chanting the name, as I mentioned, your consciousness, you feel an upliftment of consciousness. It's almost addicting. Now, scientifically, how can chanting actually benefit a person? Well, it's hard to say, you know, from a scientific point of view. Although, Krishna consciousness, that's the term we use, it is a scientific process, but it's not a material science, it's a science of the self, or a science of the soul. We are actually a spirit soul, and we have a body. We've had our body as a child, we have a body as a youth, we get a body as an old person. We go through, in fact, every seven years the body changes, every molecule is completely different. Our outlook on life is different, but we're the same person from beginning to end. So, the chanting awakens our identity to where we understand that we're not this body, but we're actually eternal spirit soul. I begin to do lots of chanting recently. And how do you find it? My mind was clouded with lust, emotion, <laughs> anger, so this chanting can clean up my mind. Sometimes what happens when you're washing, you have a dirty laundry, <clears throat> and you put it in the washing machine, and you add, the, you add the detergent, that's like the chanting, or the agitation of the washing machine, that's like the chanting. And then it appears, oh my goodness, things are not getting clean at all, it's getting dirtier because all the water is turning gray and black. Woo! That's the end of our show. We'll be back next time. We'll see you all next time. Thank you.